Okay, welcome. Uh, I'm Haijun from the uh, storage platform team. Uh, today I'm going to talk about UKL schema. I do realize this is an incredibly abstract topic. So if you do stay for the 10 minutes, you have proven yourself to be a really, really good infrastructure engineer. <laughs> and, and since you're not allowed to ask me questions by the end, I'm going to ask you a question by the end. Uh, about myself, uh, I'm from China. And I came here uh, to United States uh, to study. After graduation, I have been working in the Valley since. So for the past three years, I've been with uh, storage platform teams. Uh, back then, it was called scalability engineering. So we do all kinds of things. But today, I'm going to talk about schema. Oh, too fast. Um, what is schema? Schema is the thing that describes data. So let's talk about the life of data first. Once upon a time, in the good old days, life is very simple. A flow, a data flows from desktop to application to database, and then back. That's it. Fast forward to today. Um, life goes on and becomes complicated. So we still have uh, applications, just hold uh, a lot of them. We call them microservices. Sometimes we go overboard and they become nano services. We uh, have all kinds of databases. Some are operational, some are analytical, and some are in between. And let's, let's not forget about all the RPC, uh, uh, let's not forget about all the data in transit. There are all kinds of RPCs and uh, pops up messaging system. For example, we use uh, Kafka here. Why so many systems? because we have a lot of data to process. Um, over the time, domain-specific softwares are developed to process data at scale and uh, handle specific use cases more efficiently. So each of these uh, systems need to understand the data that flows through them, so they have their own schema languages. Um, for messaging, these are called IDLs. We are all familiar with those, JSON, Thrift, Protobuf, Avro, just to name a few, and we use them all here at Uber. For databases, we have MySQL SQL, Cassandra CQL, Hive HQL, Parquet, uh, which is a, a column-oriented uh, encoding format. And there's a lot more that I just didn't, I, have, I don't have the time to mention. And I'm pretty sure you heard all about them in the previous talk. Um, so this makes developers life really complicated. For the same data, they need to describe the schema over and over again in different languages. Uh, things get lost and things get out of sync. So here comes UKL schema. What is it? Is it yet another schema language? Are we making the situation worse? Yes and no. It is a schema language that defines logical schema for uh, uh, for a structured data set, it has a SQL-like syntax like create table, create index, create type, and something doesn't look like SQL at all, create heap pipe, which I'm going to talk about later. It is, no, it is not a, just a schema language by itself. It is the glue that tie them together, and it is the predefined mappings between all these languages. Uh, before I talk about glue and mapping, let's talk about types. And this has to be the most boring <laughs> slide. Now I'm talking about in 32. So we have two types, simple and complex. Uh, simple type, very obvious ones, in 32, in 64, and logical uh, primitive types such as timestamp, daytime, and UUID. Complex types, we have two types, uh, two kinds, container type and the user-defined types. Container types are things like array and uh, map. Uh, what about set? Well, you can use map for set. User-defined types are composite types that can be composed of other simple type, container type, and user-defined types. So now uh, let's talk about mapping. This is how map, uh, how UQL map, uh, types can be mapped to other languages. Just example, in 32, naturally map to int in other languages. Uh, UUID, we use it here everywhere in Uber. So we make it a first class citizen type. It can be mapped to UUID in CQL, but there is no UUID type, native types in MySQL or Avro. 
So we predefined the mapping to be char 36, which has to be uh, a, a canonical, canonical string representation of a UUID. We do similar things for Avro, um, which uh, we define a logical Avro type, which annotate over string uh, for, uh, for a reason. Um, we not only map uh, types, we can also map table to uh, topics, uh, heap pipe topic in particular. So heap pipe is our way to transfer data from, our, uh, from uh, operational to analytical. Uh, in a nutshell, heap pipe is Avro encoded messages flowing through Kafka topics. So that means Avro, uh, every uh, heap pipe topic is associated with Avro schema. Uh, to have a, a table data to be uh, to ingested into Hadoop through heap pipe, all developers need to do is to define, uh, create a, uh, include such a, a statement, create heap pipe on my table into their UKL schema. From there, topic are created, schema are kept in sync, data are flowing. So let's talk about how it was done before. A developer has an application whose data stored in Cassandra, for example. We also have all other kinds of uh, uh, databases. So I'm just taking Cassandra as an example. One of the table need to be ingested through heap pipe to Hadoop, uh, which is our analytical data platforms. Um, to add a column to this, uh, to his table, to his or her table, a developer needs to speak SQL to update Cassandra table, uh, speak Avro to update heap pipe schema. And this is a very error prone process and it has been the cause of uh, outages before. Uh, there's a saying, all computer science problems can be solved by adding another layer of indirection. So here we go. UKL schema is that indirection. Uh, instead of speaking different languages to define their data schema over and over again, uh, developer now define a schema in UKL schema and submit it to UKL schema service, which will take care of the rest. It will map UQL to CQL, for example, or map UQL to MySQL, map UQL to Avro. The schema will be kept in sync at all time automatically. Nobody need to worry about broken data pipe. Nobody need to worry about backfitting. Um, last but not least, you made it. Uh, <laughs> UQL schema can be annotated with tags, such as PII annotation. So when the, uh, when the developer add a column to their table, such as name, address, it is also the perfect time and place for them to annotate it with PII. This is a crucial uh, tool for us uh, that allow us to keep our data inventory uh, accurate and up to date. PI is just one kind of annotation. We can have annotation for authorization, annotation for geo partitioning, uh, sky's the limit. So now finally, that's my question. What are types anyway? With that, thank you. <laughs>